This question says, suppose you lean out of a window in a tall building and drop a stone. It leaves your hand 492 feet above the ground. How much time will it take to hit ground level? The first thing I did, which most often is the first thing you do in a physics problem, is draw a picture. So I drew a picture of this guy 492 feet above ground about to drop a stone. Right? And then the second thing I did is I realized that we're describing the motion of an object. So we're likely going to be using the kinematic equations, which I wrote out here to the right. And then the third thing I did was I listed the values in the kinematic equations, all the different variables. That way, we can see which kinematic equation we have enough information to use and then solve for the variable that we're looking for. So in this case, we know that the distance the stone is going to travel is 492 feet, which is about 150 meters. We know the initial velocity of the stone because we're just dropping it. So the initial velocity is zero. It starts at not moving at all until we drop it. And then the final velocity, we don't know. We have no idea how fast it's going to be going the moment before it hits the ground. The time it takes to hit the ground, we also don't know because that's what we're solving for. And the acceleration that the stone will be um, increasing its velocity at is going to be um, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared about. It's really like 9.81 uh, more accurately, but we could settle for 10 meters per second squared as the acceleration due to gravity. So with this information, we can see which one of these kinematic equations can we use to solve for time. So if we look at the first one, we know the distance, so we could plug in for D. We know the initial velocity, so we could plug in for um, VI. We're trying to solve for time, so we're glad that variable is there. Okay, and we know the acceleration. So it looks like we can use the first one to solve for time. And then just as an exercise, we can look at the other ones and see that we don't know the final velocity, so that's gonna be an unknown in our equation. The initial velocity is zero. There's no um, variable t here even, so there would be no way to even solve for time. In this one, we don't know the final velocity. We know the initial velocity and we know the acceleration, but we don't know the time. So we would have two unknowns in this case, which we wouldn't be able to solve for t. And then in the last one, we know the distance, we know the initial velocity, but we don't know the final velocity and we don't know the time. So again, we'd have two unknowns. So we'll use the first equation to solve the question. And we'll plug in for our values. So we're going to be using this one. All right. D is about 150 meters. And that equals the initial velocity 0 times T plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is 10 meters per second squared, times T squared. And then we get 150 equals one half times 10 T squared, which equals five T squared. Okay, and so then if we divide this five over, we have T squared equals 15. We can take the square root of T and we can see that t equals the square root of 15 seconds. And that's how long it should take, roughly, because we didn't use an exact value for a or an exact value for d. So um, it'll be about the square root of 15 seconds.